Beyond Meat versus Impossible Foods, which one is better? What is going on guys? Welcome into this video today. That is what we're going to be talking about in this video today. So this video is going to have two parts to it. It's mainly going to be revolving around Impossible Foods because there was some news that came out around Impossible Foods that could very well affect Beyond Meat and I'm sure some people are panic selling. This is a very good time to panic sell I think with the first part of this video that came out about Impossible Foods. So I'm going to be taking you guys through two different articles and be going over how this news really does like I just said affects Beyond on meat, what can happen, is Impossible a legitimate competitor now? All those things in between. Uh, if you guys follow me on TikTok, then you've probably already seen something like this. I already put out something. If you wanna go ahead and follow me on there, go ahead. I usually post there like two to three times a day about different stock market news, different stocks I follow, or just different personal finance tips. So if you wanna go check that out, go ahead, Potato Finance, the link will be down below. But anyway, if you guys get some value out of this, if you do enjoy this, if you really do like me putting out this stock news video and going over different articles about different companies I own, different companies I follow, Please drop a like on the video. That really does help me out massively. And I really do appreciate every single one of you that just pay me in that type of compensation. Also, if you haven't yet, this is your first time being here, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Turn on that notification bell so you don't miss any future uploads. We've been posting three videos a week. We're going to keep that up for the foreseeable future. And let's get into this article here today, guys. So this article revolving around Impossible Foods is actually pretty big news for the whole entire plant-based food industry as a whole. And this is actually going to surprise a lot of you, but I actually think this is great news for Beyond Meat and what we're going to talk about in this article. Impossible Foods cuts grocery store prices 20% to compete with the cow. The price of an Impossible Burger just got a little easier to swallow. For the first time, Impossible Foods is cutting prices of its plant-based meat at grocery stores by 20%. The suggested retail price for an Impossible Burger will drop to $5.49 for patties and $6.99 for 12-ounce packages in about 17,000 U.S. grocery stores, including Walmart, Kroger, Safeway, and Target. Similar price reductions are planned in Canada, Singapore, and Hong Kong. Impossible Foods president Dennis Woodside told Yahoo Finance Live the company wants to eventually undercut ground beef prices undercut ground beef prices. Keep that in mind. That's very important for this entire industry, which currently retail for $2 to $3 a patty. That's the goal, said Woodside. Compete with the cow, and to do that, we have to price like the cow. This is the third price cut for privately held, also very important, privately held Impossible Foods in less than a year. The Redwood City, California-based company has already cut prices twice for food distributors. Our production is up nine times in the past two years, said Woodside. We've been able to get economies of scale out of the business and efficiencies in our production footprint, and we're just passing those along to the consumer. Woodside is already hinting of more price cuts to come. As demand grows, we'll reinvest that efficiency back into our prices. He said more than other fake meat producers, Impossible's biggest competition is the cow. People are moving to Impossible from animals, he said. 80% of our consumers are switching from pork or beef or chicken or fish. They're not switching from other plant-based products. Impossible Foods fake pork and beef are also sold in national restaurants like Burger King, which introduced the Impossible Whopper in 2019, and Starbucks, which rolled out the Impossible breakfast sandwich in June 2020. Impossible Foods' aggressive price cut turned up the heat on its biggest rival, Beyond Meat, which saw its stock sink 6% Tuesday on the news. We're going to get to that in a minute. Investors are concerned that if Beyond matches Impossible's price reduction to stay competitive, it could undercut its revenue and the chances of turning its first annual profit since Beyond's IPO in 2019. The company announced in January that it inked a deal to make snacks and beverages with PepsiCo. Impossible Foods also plans to give Beyond Meat a run for its money overseas. Woodside said he expects Impossible to make a big push into international markets this year. Beyond Meat has distributed deals in Australia, Chile, the European Union, Hong Kong, Ireland, Israel, the Middle East, New Zealand, South Korea, Taiwan, and the United Kingdom. So for anyone that's newer in the stock market, or maybe someone that didn't really do their entire full research on the company, the industry, all those things, this honestly seems like a good panic sell moment because, oh well, it's a short-term thing, like, oh my God, Impossible is cutting prices. That's not exactly the case, and this doesn't actually concern me at all as an investor. If anything, this actually really motivates me and this makes me feel a lot better about my investment because this is a first step towards a really huge turning point in this industry and it's honestly going to change the entire food industry as we know it. Like, believe me, guys, when we look back five, ten years from now, where it's going to be completely different, I truly believe, after doing all my research. Anyway, I have a couple of reasons here as to why I'm not concerned. First of all, Impossible is a private company. So really quickly, if you're a public company, anyone can buy it. doesn't matter if you're me. doesn't matter if you're you. doesn't matter if you're Warren Buffett. doesn't matter if you're Tom Brady. It doesn't matter. Anyone can buy the company, and they can buy as much as they want. They can go right on their phone. They can go onto Robinhood if you really want to be that bold, or whatever brokerage you use, and you can buy a 
stock in the company. You can purchase it and you're an art owner of that company, okay? But if you're private, that's the thing, you can't do that. These smaller investors like you and myself, we can't get involved in a company like this. It's like really, really big name people that are gonna buy like a huge stake, like a 10% stake in the company, like maybe someone like a Warren Buffett or a Mark Cuban, someone like that who sees a lot of potential in this company and has a lot of money to deploy. Or maybe it's like friends, family, people like that, small people that are connected with the CEO, that are connected with the management team. But since they're not public, it's gonna to be tougher for them to raise funds. They're not gonna be able to bring in as much capital. Obviously, Beyond is a public company because I own it, as I've talked about many times in this channel. So it's gonna be easier for Beyond to raise funds as opposed to Impossible. That's the first reason this really doesn't concern me. The second reason, Impossible has come out and said, several times that they struggle to keep up with the supply and demand that Beyond does. That's why Beyond's the one who's in conversations with McDonald's in, in this McDonald's deal about the plant-based food, and that's why Impossible's not in these conversations, because Beyond can just keep up with the supply and demand a lot better than Impossible can. Look it up, do some research, they can, and that makes me, honestly, that's one reason I really can't consider Impossible as a true, true competitor just yet, because, well, one, they're not public, so they can't raise those funds, and two, they can't keep up with the supply and demand. If you can't keep up with the supply and demand, then someone's just gonna, you know, the companies, all these contractors, they're all just gonna go and get that company that can keep up with this supply and demand, meaning Beyond Meat. Thirdly, Ethan Brown. Ethan Brown is a game changer CEO. Honestly, I've researched a lot of CEOs. I do a lot of research on CEOs. I watch a lot of interviews on CNBC, on Yahoo Finance. I really, really like Ethan Brown. He legitimately wants, <laughs> He legitimately makes me want to become a vegan. Like, I'm not even kidding when I say that. I've watched so many interviews on him and I just like, he's just one of those guys, whenever he's talking, you just stop and listen about what he's talking about because he's so passionate about it. He's got fantastic reasons on why he started this company. I really love everything about him. I just, I can't even say enough good things about him. But anyway, the whole point of this is I truly believe Ethan Brown is gonna find a way to get their meat prices, meat prices, plant-based meat prices, to compete with Impossible Foods. Obviously, like they talk about in the article, if he did it today, it's gonna cut into their revenues and it's really gonna hurt that money they're bringing in that top line. And it's obviously gonna, when it hurt the top line, it's obviously gonna hurt the bottom line as well. But I truly believe Ethan Brown, and it's not gonna be today, it's not gonna be tomorrow, it might even be next year, but I truly believe Ethan Brown is gonna find a way to get his products, his Beyond Meat products, under the cost of meat. Do I know how he's gonna do it off the top of my head? No, I do not know how he's gonna do it. I truly believe he's gonna find a way. I truly, truly believe that. Then, on top of that, the same day this news came out, Beyond Meat initially started to sink, this came out. Impossible Burgers Bleeding, Addictive Needs More Testing Lawsuit Alleges. They say blood is thicker than water, but what about like hemoglobin? The Center for Food Safety and Advocacy Group that promotes organic, ecological, and sustainable alternatives to industrial food processing is suing the Food and Drug Administration in an effort to have the agency require more testing of the addictive that makes Impossible Burgers appear to bleed. Soy like hemoglobin, or Heme, for short, is what Impossible Foods describes as the magic ingredient in its plant-based burgers. It's what gives the meatless burger their juicy appearance akin to traditional beef burgers. Impossible's heme is made using yeast genetically engineered with a gene from soybean plant roots, according to the company. But heme is naturally found in all animals and plants. In 2019, the FDA said heme doesn't require the same certification process as color addictives in food, agreeing with Impossible Foods that there is a reasonable certify of no harm for this use of soy like hemoglobin as a color additive. However, the Center for Food Safety wrote in a court filing last week that Impossible Foods didn't provide enough data to the FDA to prove that its heme is safe. The group also alleged the FDA failed to properly respond to its objections to the heme approval. Bill Free, science policy analyst at the Center for Food Safety, said in a written statement that a short-term study in rats showed some troubling possible effects from eating modified heme. FDA approved soy like hemoglobin even though it conducted none of the long-term animal studies that are needed to determine whether or not it harms human health. Free said. Impossible Foods also declined to comment on the lawsuit, but a company spokesperson said in an email that it puts health and safety first and we meet or exceed all pertinent food and safety regulations. Impossible has worked closely with the FDA, the nation's food safety guardian, and has shared box extensive test data and commercial plans with the government body, the spokesperson wrote. Impossible Foods further called the Center for Food Safety an anti-GMO, anti-science organization that has been spreading lies about Impossible Food for years. Impossible's products are widely available at nearly 17,000 
thousand supermarkets, and the company has partnered with restaurant chains like Burger King to offer its meatless burgers across the country. Fox Business has reported. So obviously, this is a little bit of a mixed bag we got going on here. I can see that. I understand that. I have some thoughts around this. Now, I'm trying to think of this from perspective of someone who doesn't do the full research, who doesn't do their own DD, because I feel like a lot of people do that. They just happen to see, you know, something that comes across on CNN, or maybe they see something in their email or the newsletter or something like that. They just take it and run with it, and they don't move their opinion because it's very hard to change a first impression. That's why first impressions are so important because that just sticks in your mind forever. So this is your first impression of Impossible Foods. This could definitely stick in your mind. It can definitely affect the company. Obviously, this kind of goes with every single company. It doesn't just apply to Impossible Foods, but I'm just trying to use that for the sake of this example here. Anyway, so I feel like this could leave a bad taste in people's mouth. So what happens when people see this? They see this lawsuit that come out, and then do they want to buy Impossible Foods? And maybe, maybe they do. Maybe they do because it's the cheaper side. Like we just mentioned, they are cutting twice as 20%. So they could definitely benefit in the short term. Absolutely. But then I'm thinking, all right, so what happens when Beyond Meat cuts prices? Because as I just said, I truly, truly believe Beyond Meat is going to end up cutting their prices. I believe Ethan Brown's going to find a way to get those prices down to the cow per se, even below the cow. When that happens, this food industry, it's going to be completely, completely flipped. Believe me, guys. Believe me. So when that happens and you have to decide between this company that has a lawsuit against it that's stuck in your mind, and you have to decide between Beyond Meat, which is another really big plant-based meat industry, which one are you gonna choose? Obviously, if you're someone, you're that 1% or 2% of the population that actually does their full research and actually looks into this stuff, that's a different story, we're singing a different tune. But most people, let's be real, most people aren't even going to invest in companies like this, never mind continue to do research about what happens with these lawsuits. Like, let's be perfectly honest and perfectly real here. So, if you're a newer vegan, if you were a vegan, what would you do? What would you do? I know me personally, I would probably go with the cheaper option at first, but I'm also not a vegan, so that's very easy for me to say. If I was a true vegan and I was buying this stuff, I'd honestly probably go with Beyond Meat because that's the safer product, it seems like. I don't think Impossible did anything wrong necessarily. It seems like they were cooperating with the FDA based off that article I just read and everything else I looked into, but still, it's something to take into consideration. It's something you have to think about, and I think some people are going to think about it, and a lot of people are going to see this. It's just going to be kind of in the back of their minds, and I think it's going to stick with them, and honestly, I think at the end of the that's going to benefit beyond more. But to summarize, I would choose beyond in a situation like this, especially if the price were the same. Obviously, I'm a little bit biased because I'm very bullish on Beyond Meat and I own Beyond Meat. But at the end of the day, I really think Beyond Meat would benefit more from this because they don't have that lawsuit against them. And I could see vegans taking a second look at Impossible because of this. But that's just my two cents on it. I also think Beyond just has more and better products as a whole. Obviously, the burger is a little bit more of a toss-up. I'm really interested to see what Beyond does with these new burgers they're releasing in 2021. I'm really excited to try those, but that Beyond Sausage, man, that's fantastic. Every time I go to Dunkin', which is very rare, but every time I go, I always get the Beyond Sausage sandwich. I love it. I like it better than regular sausage. It's fantastic. I'm buying that right now when it's more expensive than regular meat. Never mind when it's equal or below regular meat. I, I'm very excited for this industry. I'm really excited to see what happens. But hey, that's just my two cents on it. My job is not to make investment decisions for you. My job is just to entertain you because that's what we're here, entertainment purposes only. So always make sure you're doing your own research and your own due diligence. But anyway, guys, in saying that, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Hope you guys enjoyed this news update, these news videos. I know some people down in those comments really do like these. I like making them because it obviously it helps me keep up to date with my companies. I'm kind of killing two birds with one stone here. But if you guys do get some value out of it, make sure to drop a like on the video. That really has helped me out in a massive way. And I appreciate every single one of you that helped me out by doing that. Also, if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe. I'd love to have you here. I'd love to see you back in the comment section for some more videos. Let me know down in the comments what you think of this news, how this is going to affect Pot Impossible, if you see it affecting them, if you don't see it affecting them, whatever you think, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you guys. And I'll see you guys in the next video.